Yo Workshop is pleased to present All We Have, its second solo exhibition of the works of Bali-based Italian artist Filippo Sciascia. The present exhibition features both mixed-media paintings and sculptures that represent a continuation of Sciascia's abiding interest in light, and an exploration of the material and motific forms that one of the most fundamental elements of our universe may be embodied in. For the artist, light, and of course, energy, constitutes the evolution of life in human civilizations as we know it. I take light because of its physics properties. Not the romantic ways, not the, just another way to portray it, uh, light effects, but it's more about the quality of the light that has actually been literally universal foundation for the, for the universe, for the creation of the earth, the plant system, and it's been throughout very fun fundamental for the, any civilization. The progress in technology it was the start of technology, let's say from fire to oil to, to electricity and to the technology that we all use today. And uh, essentially what I do is try to reconnect those aspects coming from deep history past. And now that the same material becomes part of the technology we use today, for example, like all the technology has for mobiles or machine learning application for artificial intelligence, the whole computing data way of making information available today, which essentially you can trace it back to beginning of languages. So this information, the, let's say the genetic of information. So all this material, I visualize and I try to make it physical into either as a sculpture or a painting. Shasha is interested in the biological starting points of contemporary technology and its origins in natural materials that were often formed millennia ago. The intersection of the digital and the mineral, the relentlessly contemporary, and the occluded primitive. Machine learning, again, it is the highest application that we have to process data and uh, to forward what is what is the application that you can do with uh, artificial intelligence. It's literally present in, in all our mobile device. And uh, I was interested in the beginning, the fact that it takes inspiration from our neurological system, yeah, which works through uh, electricity itself. That's what you get. You get, you get a, an electric impulse every time you process uh, Every time we think of something, every time we react of something, either it's thinking or feeling, you know. So and and and, and there is the same process that uh, artificial intelligence follows. It is worse because of electricity. So I had that 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 initial uh, idea that could match with what I was working on. The quartet of works here are a continuation of Shasha's abiding interest in the materiality, the production, and the metaphorical language of light. Lux Lumina, for instance, is an oil painting based on a late 18th century lithograph illustrating a meteoroid exploding as it entered the Earth's atmosphere. In referencing historical imagery involving light, Shasha evokes both the history of the representation of light, as well as an era before the advent of recording technology, when scientific imaging was achieved through artistic rendering. Phylogenetic is a painting of a wooded terrain, the Stygian forest eliminated by a strip of LED lights placed behind the canvas, positioned to resemble, of course, a slanting shaft of sunlight. According to the artist, the work may be read within a particular tradition of landscape painting in Western art history, one that substitutes the typical portrayal of bucolic woods with a lush tropical jungle, foregrounding the biological matter of plant life and replacing the depiction of light with an actual light source, suggesting natural processes of energy production involving sunlight, such as photosynthesis. It's called primitive morning, and exactly a bit like I just said, I will give you the sample in this particular piece of primitive morning, where uh, I said earlier that I'm interested in the physics of light. So light travels in waves, and then I found the material that was in a wave shape. Then I apply lights, and lights literally go across the waving surface 
and you can see how it starts very intense and it fades away. That's what light does in every object and, uh, and throughout our eyes as well. So you have this thing about the, the light wave traveling and the parallel that looks like wave of light. And then all the borders of that artwork are made of this yellowish transparent material, which is actually fossilized resin. Now, fossilized resin, it's a secretion of a plant. And to be fossil, it means that it's millions of years old. So what do I do? I collect rocks of fossilized resin and melt them or pulverize them and turn them into objects that I can use into um, a contemporary work. So in other words, it's taking something that is very ancient and give another function in today's uh, contemporary artwork, in this case, my, my painting there. So this is always the parallel I try to run. So taking ancient material and making it into contemporary. Clara Filiana takes as its chief motif the use of light, albeit without the inclusion of light itself. Here, the depiction of biological life, Bofana, a leaf insect, and Flora, the plant it mimics and feeds on, allude to the fact that light, through the process of photosynthesis, is the ultimate source of existence. The artist Xuan Long series is premised on objects and matter in motion, things that acquire new significance in purposive juxtapositions with other things. The first Xuan Long piece is a wall-bound sculpture that assumes the form of a dragon's head with a gaping maw, fabricated from a mixture of volcanic black sand and resin. Here, the dovetailing of form and media may be located in the myth of Naga Basuki, the dragon of Balinese lore that is said to reside in a crater of the island's volcano, Mount Agung, that remains active today. The etiological linking of volcanic activity and mythical beasts finds, in Shasha's hands, a correspondence in the recreation of draconian iconography from volcanic black sand, an imprecation of cause and effect. The brilliant corn yellow of the wall on which the work hangs also proffers historical reference. It immediately recalls the regal hue of Chinese imperial culture, but also the use of gold in Byzantine art, as well as, according to the artist, Vincent van Gogh's famous sunflowers. The other Xuanlong works consist of assemblages of various found objects. The larger piece includes two diminutive bronze dragon sculptures affixed to a U-shaped length of stainless steel pipe. The sculptures were originally part of a Balinese incense burner. The smaller work likewise features a piece of steel piping, albeit of reduced dimensions, and a wooden sculpture of a Balinese dragon's head, which once adorned a walking stick, and from whose mouth emits a coral-shaped stalactite of cream-colored quartz or resembling draconian flames. Shasha observes, these works combine the mythological symbolism of the dragon and its association with fire, with stainless steel, one of the highest achievements in technology's historical process, which began in the Stone and Bronze Ages, until our industries were revolutionized by its development. In one of the sculptures, the dragon has a piece of mineral stalactite in his mouth as it were fire. But this quartz stalactite is another a geological element in its primitive state, formed as well by heat. Shasha's objects in their physical makeup bring into focus the notion of the long durée. Primitive and modern materials are repurposed as asynchronous elements, gesturing at the glacial spans of geological timescales and the fact that, according to the artist, all these materials related to science and natural biological structure are the foundations on which we humans stand. Crescita Techno Organica and Untitled are both vertical sculptural forms that foreground the presence of prehistoric matter, juxtaposed against materials that arrived much later in the history of technological and industrial development. In these works, Works, long aluminium stands bear the weight of different substances, resin in the case of the former, quartz in the latter. Here, as is typical of many of his works, material and motif coincide. The Primitive Morning Works is a sculptural rendition of a fragment of an imaginary Greco-Roman mask crafted from fossilized resin that suggests the art historical traditions of Italy, the land of the artist's birth. The use of fossilized resin is conspicuous. Present in the clear, honey-hued amber of the materials are bits and flecks of unidentifiable objects, a record of the natural environment that has been preserved in it. 
The botanical origins of resin also accords with what has been inserted into the open mouth of the mask, an organic leaf. The latter is, of course, an element that requires regular changing to remain fresh. A gesture that Shasha remarks is akin to the Balinese practice of placing offerings at an altar. Untitled consists simply of a found fossilized shell. As the artist puts it, fossils are all geological evidence of life, plant, organism, human, and animals. They tell us about our prehistoric environment. The motif of the shell bears autobiographical connotations, almost in a matter of a self-portrait. Shasha notes that for most of his life, he has lived in various foreign countries, where his typical way of life has involved being secluded in his studio making art. In the current exhibition, all we have is placed above one of the windows of the gallery space. The aperture looks out onto the wooded surrounds of the Gilman Barracks precinct, and poised above the narrow vista of green is the painting, which consists of the titular phrase rendered as if to seem that the text is aglow, or or fabricated from light tubes. Where Shasha's other work substitutes fiction of light in with actual light sources, the reverse is accomplished here. What seems to be genuine light on the canvas turns out to be but a mimetic representation of a return to art historical praxis. Mixed into the textual portion of the work is an ingredient that Shasha sometimes utilizes in his work. Oh, we have the neon sign. That white is actually a mixture of calcium, gesso and melatonin powder. It's really opaque. It might resemble more the white of a wall because it is actually made of calcium, like I said. And the melatonin powder is very, very white. So I'm using that. Melatonin is produced by the human body to regulate our circadian cycles in sleep, and here it emphasizes the importance of natural light, as well as its absence, a fact that dovetails with the pretense of actual light in the painting.